the truth about the NBA All-Star Game. Giannis Lillard and Curry look like a future super team combining for 95 points in Team LeBron's blowout win, but how do the other events go? You're about to see a review of the key moments from the night, and stay tuned to see my bold takes on the dunk contest. Right quick before we start, around 83% of you watching right now aren't subscribed, so please, if you enjoy my videos, consider hitting the subscribe button, as not only does it help out a ton, but I'd also very much appreciate it. Not to look too far ahead, but Sunday night's game potentially showcased some future ring-chasing duos or big threes, as King James, Steph, the Greek Freak, Dame Time, CP3, Jokic, Doncic, PG13, and Jalen Underappreciated Brown were all on the same team. Whether you love him or hate him, there's no denying that the man LBJ knows how to pick a pretty damn good all-star team. Conversely, for Kevin Durant, I know he was injured for the game, but it's gotta be pretty damn embarrassing for the Slim Reaper that from top to bottom, LeBron's team was way better than his. Breakdowns on the game and my thoughts on the dunk contest, which you can't miss, that's all coming up. But quickly, we'll look at what started out the evening of All-Star festivities. The skills competition took place, and the big men beasted like they typically do, with Sabonis taking out Robert Covington, Luka Doncic, who hilariously forgot to take off his warm-ups, and then DeMontis dropped the dagger on Nikola Vucevic to become the skills contest champ. This event has significantly improved since it was changed from individual timed runs to these head-to-head -head battles that create so much intrigue. Then, the three-point contest was where Golden State Stephen Curry and Utah's first-time All-Star Mike Conley look like men amongst boys. In the first round, Curry made it look easy and put the fear into the other competitors dropping in 31 points, but Jazz guard Mike Conley then responded and put the pressure on Steph as he dropped a score of 28 points in round one, and then in the final round, dropped 27. Stephen Curry had to match that if he was going to be 2021's three-point champion, and going into the final rack, it really didn't look good. But then Curry hit four out of his five on the Moneyball rack, which included a clutch dagger and celebration. Not going to lie, watching this live, I was going crazy after this. The two-time league MVP is carrying the Warriors into the playoff picture, and this contest further exemplified how incredible the man's been this year. But on to the game, which featured a shocking lob dunk finish from the 35-year-old CP3, a noteworthy deep range stroke from the Greek Freak, and generationally great shooting from Dame Time and the Chef. All in the first half, Steph dropped a no-look to Jokic, he had a swag turnaround three-pointer from the corner, and displayed his sneaky hops by even dunking the ball with a shocking lob finish. But this sequence at the end of the second quarter has me begging to see Damian Lillard and Stephen Curry team up one day. First, with 20 seconds left, Dame pulls up from dead center court to drain a dagger from distance, his fourth triple of the half. Purely the range on Dame's jumper is something we should all appreciate we're alive to see. But on the very next possession, the greatest three-point shooter in history sauces up Harden with a quick crossover into a Curry slide, which somehow creates enough momentum for Curry to put just enough arc on this deep range bomb from just inside half court for it to find the back of the net. But while the first half was owned by the chef, after a dunk contest, which I'll give my hot takes on coming up, the second half was all about the Greek freak and big game dang. Jokic and Giannis became a force to be reckoned with as well, as this is the real reason I was disappointed when the loyal Giannis re-signed in Milwaukee. Don't get me wrong, I'm happy for Bucks fans, but it would have been awesome to see him team up with an offensive mastermind in the Joker. From the spacing to the off-ball cuts, Giannis and Nicola were vibing off each other's games. Down the stretch, Adetokounmpo continued his shocking night from distance, hitting his third three-pointer of the game. You probably know Giannis took home the Kobe Bryant All-Star Game MVP trophy, and that was well-deserved because he was a brilliant 16 for 16 from the field, and he finished with 35 points. And I know the All-Star Game defense is brutal, but the deep-range stroke from Giannis is looking improved this year, and if he's stepping up on the big stage like this, who knows, maybe the Greek Freak can come through for the Bucks in the playoffs. But without the clutchest player in the league, Damian Lillard, putting a team on his back, Team LeBron wouldn't have embarrassed Team KD like they did. This is solid defense from Donovan Mitchell right here, but Lillard just steps back and drains an off-balance, highly contested three-pointer in his grill. I know it's the All-Star game, but every Hoops fan in the world is watching. This is some massive pressure. 
showing up on this big stage by knocking down not just eight regular three-pointers, but eight deep-range bombs, including the game winner from the All-Star logo. You never know what Dame's going to pull out of his bag. And he and Curry combined to make 16 of their 32 three-point attempts, with Dame scoring 32 and Steph scoring 28. You would have wished it would have been a bit more competitive, but other than that and the dunk contest, last night's All-Star evening was everything you could have asked for. Creative plays and the best players in the league on one team, that all made it a special night in Atlanta. There was a ton of scrutiny coming into this event as the two Sixer All-Stars Simmons and Embiid got COVID-19 and were forced to miss the game. That upsetting moment for Philly's duo was unfortunate to hear and I feel for Sixer fans. But I mean, other than that, from the entertainment between the lines to everything the league did to honor the frontline workers and historically black colleges and universities, the night was a big time success. I loved how the NBA gave coverage of players like Ben Wallace and Robert Covington who went to HBCUs. However, one event stood out as horrifically bad. Anthony Simons won the dunk contest, congrats to the man, but it was an oddly judged competition which was quite honestly pretty damn boring. And it's not completely on the players because Toppin, Stanley, and Simons had some decent throwdowns. The issue is every dunk has been done at this point. That's why in my opinion, the NBA should leave the dunk contest in the past. Instead of the dunk contest being known as a competition that often fails to live up to expectations and is repetitive, let's make it something we can look back on and say, damn, the dunk contest was dope, if you know what I'm saying. Like, it's getting repetitive, it's getting really boring at this point when we don't have the top players getting in this competition. That's why the league should replace the dunk contest with 1v1 competitions between the top players. Right now, watching unaccomplished, frankly, random NBA players try to emulate legendary dunkers is cringeworthy and just plain unentertaining. Again, Obi, Cassius, and Anthony did solid jobs, but this is a competition that's seen decades of dunks done over and over. I think it's getting old at this point, but I want to know all of your thoughts on the 2021 All-Star Game. Do you agree with me about the dunk contest, or what was your favorite part about the All-Star Game? Let's be friends. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops. Links in the description for that. Hope you have a great one, and I'll see you next video.